Abraham Lincoln once said, When you have got an elephant by the hind legs and he is trying to run away, it is best to let him run. Buddhists teach that expectations are the cause of all suffering. The only reason we get upset is because we expect a different outcome. For example, a couple of months ago I was asked if I could run a course over the summer semester at uni. It involved things such as monitoring the forums, answering students' inquiries, and designing and marking assignments and examinations. I was happy to have been given the opportunity, so I went in to see the course examiner. She was quite pleased with my enthusiasm and knowledge and basically gave me the job there and then. Of course nowadays nothing is final until a contract is signed, so she told me that she would work on writing up the contract and get it to me before the start of semester, which actually started on Monday this week. Monday came round and I still hadn't heard anything about the job, so I decided to contact her to find out what was going on. Basically I was told that they had already chosen another person and that they won't be needing me. I felt a bit disappointed because I had been given the impression that I had the job. It was just a matter of sorting out the contract. But I didn't get it, and they were obviously never going to tell me that I didn't get it, either due to embarrassment or not wanting to make me upset. By all rights, I could have been upset and angry that they hadn't told me the result. I could have been upset that they had given me the impression that I had the job, causing me to turn down other job opportunities in the meantime. But although I was upset for a short time on Monday afternoon, I soon realised it doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, it is simply of no consequence. Instead of being upset, I'm looking for the positive. I won't have to spend my summer dealing with potentially obnoxious students. I won't have to deal with students disagreeing with my marking every step of the way. I'll have much more time to spend with my family over the summer holidays. I'll have more time to make more videos for this channel. There's lots of good ways to look at it without feeling miserable. I found that almost every time that I've had a strong expectation or anticipation about about something, and then that something has fallen through, then I've gotten extremely upset and pissed off. But what's the point of getting pissed off? In almost every situation that I've experienced, it has achieved nothing, and quite frankly, has just led to more stress and more hardship. I've been mulling over this idea of expectation causing suffering for a while now. It makes sense. If we had no expectations, then we simply would never have anything to be disappointed about. It would also mean that we would have nothing to look forward to, but on the plus side, we would have nothing to be upset about. I would suggest that it would be a fairly boring existence. I think the key to happiness is to find a comfortable middle ground. We can't completely eliminate our expectations without also eliminating a lot of the joy in our life. Nor should we get super upset when our expectations don't materialise. Our expectations cannot change reality, so it's best that we manage them in a positive and realistic way. I think Thai Buddhist master Ajahn Chah described it quite succinctly. The veracity of this quote has been disputed, but it's still a good quote nonetheless. You see this goblet? For me this glass is already broken. I enjoy it. I drink out of it. It holds my water admirably, sometimes even reflecting the sun in beautiful patterns. If I should tap it, it has a lovely ring to it. But when I put the glass on the shelf and the wind knocks it over or my elbow brushes it off the table and it falls to the ground and shatters, I say, of course. When I understand that the glass is already broken, every moment with it is precious. He makes a good point. The reason we enjoy anything in life is because it is fleeting. We enjoy the pizza we are eating now because we know it will finish. We enjoy playing with our pet dog because deep down we know he will not be with us forever. If we could live forever, who would bother getting out of bed in the morning? We could always hold off until the next day. It is the knowledge that we are going to die that motivates us to achieve things in our life. That said, why do we get so upset when something doesn't go our way? If I'm expecting a new job, but I don't get one, is complaining and worrying about it going to change anything? Surely it would be a much better use of my time to just forget about it and move on to my next exploit. And that's exactly what I need to do in my life. I found that there have been many times where I've desperately wanted something and have done almost anything to get it. But finally, when I do achieve it, it's not as good as I first thought. For example, in my early 20s, I really wanted to join the police force. I studied all the practice tests. I volunteered in the community. I got into shape. I did everything I could to succeed. But then after passing all the psychometric tests, completing my physical and medical, and sitting through a gruelling interview process, they told me that I wasn't right for the job. Did that stop me? Never. A few years later, I applied again. I did everything twice as hard as last time. I passed all my tests, went into the interview with a lot of confidence, and finally they took a chance with me and accepted me as a police recruit. Did I enjoy my time in the police? No, I hated it. I should have taken my first experience as a sign and realised that I wasn't suited to being a police officer. And this is the point I'm trying to make. If something is stopping me from doing something, and consistently so, then I should take that as a hint not to do it. That's not me giving up, that's just me being realistic and aware of the world around me. It's much better for my mental health to accept my fate, move on, and find something else that fits in more easily and more comfortably with my life. Some people might refer to this as finding your flow. 
After I was unsuccessful with my police application, it actually encouraged me to apply for jobs that I wouldn't normally apply for. Soon after, I applied for a job in Japan that I thought I couldn't possibly get, but I did get it, and the next five to six years of my life revolved around my new life in Japan. So looking back at it, it was probably a positive thing that I failed to get into the police force. Over the last five years or so, I've been constantly worried about how I'll purchase a house. Housing prices have become more and more unaffordable in recent years in Australia, but I've recently realised it simply doesn't matter. We currently rent, but that's no big deal. We have a roof over our heads. If it rains, we remain dry. If there's a problem with the house, we contact the real estate agent and they arrange for it to be fixed. There's lots of positives about renting a house. That said, I would still like to own my own one day, but I'm not going to spend all my days worrying about it, that's for sure. And now I know the best way to achieve happiness, at least in my life. I must manage my expectations, accept things that I cannot change, and find the positive in every situation. If something bad happens, I must learn from it, and then move on. Dwelling on negative experiences doesn't help anyone. Life brings us a whole bunch of unexpected events. We can either fight life at every turn and be stressed and anxious all the time, or we can accept our fate and move forward with our heads held high. Psychologists have found that people who are overly controlling end up being frustrated and having fairly miserable lives. They obviously have high expectations of others, and when those expectations are constantly not met, they get angry and frustrated. People who accept things as they come experience much greater happiness. If you want to be happy, don't fight the universe. Be one with the universe.